It all has to do with the energetic experience that we start the date night with. And that again, starts with the planning aspect of it and knowing what the outcome you want. Because if you know the outcome and you're open to possibilities, you don't care how you get there as long as you get there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, the founder, the creator, Tim, the Powerful Man Matthews. Tim, what's happening? Yes, I really enjoy. So, yeah, life is good. Um, So, I know we are tight on time, so I'm going to dive right in. And I like it when we get a little bit tight on time because uh, it streamlines things, right? Just like the episode about how to live a meaningful life. So this is going to, the question I have got for you, Doug, is one that you've said in the past requires more time to answer. So you're going to have to think fast. And it's also in response to some of what the men have been posting in the Facebook community. Um, So the question is, how do you plan the perfect date night? Oh, So how do you plan the perfect date night? First, get it on your calendar. Step one, (laughs) get it on your calendar and start thinking about it, right? Thinking about the outcome that you want to have. What is the outcome you want at the end of date night, right? Okay, maybe come with two outcomes uh, that you want at the end of your date night (laughs) that you can do and reverse back into there. Um, and what I, when I say the outcome, I don't just mean sex, right? I, I want to go with the energetic outcome that you want. And what do you want as an outcome past that evening, right? What is it that you want to experience during the date night, emotionally, physically, all of those things and paint that picture in your head and then make sure that you give yourself enough time, gentlemen, cause I've certainly been guilty about this that you have cushions around your date night time. So you're not running from a conference call in Dubai and sprinting. It's five o'clock and you're supposed to, you know, be with your wife at five and you're trying to transition, you know, right into this, you know, perfect date night. Give yourself some time for transition. Give yourself some time to transition from, you know, work mode or whatever mode it is you're in to being present with your partner. Step two, planning the perfect date night, Tim, I think is making sure that you know what your partner likes. And I guess more importantly, knowing what you like and what your partner likes. And then looking around and coming up with ideas around your community and things to do. Now, something I used to do, and I still do it today, we just moved to a new place, as you know, is I subscribe to a lot of local events lists. And Facebook makes this pretty easy too. So what this allows me to do is when I'm, when I'm ready to start planning is I go through these newsletters in, in a folder I have in, in Gmail, which is what I use, the G Suite. And I also go to the list and I'm looking for events and things that interest me and I think will interest my wife. Then I plan date night around that. So I don't, the, what I try to avoid is getting into that, oh shit, it's Thursday. I got to come up with something. Let's just pick a restaurant and go there. To me, that is not a perfect date night. I think planning a perfect date night has to do with having your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the community, what's going on around you. Uh, But again, starting with the end in mind, not just of that evening, but the actual experience you want to have moving forward based on that. And that could be conversations, et cetera. Uh, And then looking to see how you can formulate that. Like, again, it's like baking. I want to make a German sweet chocolate cake. I know what it tastes like. I know how much I want to make, how many people are going to be there. Now I can back into the recipe on how I want to make it. Mm. So what happens, well, do you do anything to uh, gauge the pulse, let's say, of or the interest of Erin leading up to date night? Because sometimes, right, you can plan these date nights, but you can get there and uh, let's say that Erin might be tired or she might just want to stay in or, you know. So is there anything you do beforehand to, to gauge the level of, Mm, let's just call it interest. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I will. So, you know me, I like to, I like to throw out teasers and what I call planting seeds in people's heads about, I try to build excitement, right? We all like excitement. We all like the anticipation of something. So I'll try to build that, but I'll also check in with her. So I have the benefit. Uh, I work at home a lot, but I also have an office I go worked in. So if I'm with her and, I'm, and I see that she's just exhausted, then I pivot, right? It's just a matter of pivoting. 
So this, this comes into expectations versus possibilities. If I expect something, I only have a black and white answer. There's not really any possibility in there. But if the possibility is like, hey, I got tickets for a movie that we want to go see. It's going to be amazing. We've got a babysitter. Things are going to be great. And I look over and she's just exhausted. My wife's pregnant at the moment. So it just takes a lot out of her. I might say, let's do this. I'm going to make some popcorn. We're going to put a picnic on the, on the ground and let's watch a movie at home. And I'll just pivot, Tim. I'll just pivot with that energy. And, you know, well, we spent $30 on a movie ticket, you know, or two tickets or whatever to the, the who cares, right? Because what I paid for was an experience. And I, the, going to the movies was that experience. But instead of getting caught up into the investment into those tickets, I'm going to have the same experience. Now I'm just going to have it at home. She's going to feel lighter. It's going to allow her to get the energy that she wants. We can chill out, watch TV, um, you know, or what or movie or whatever it is and still have a great time together. Um, I mm. think what happens is as men and as women, we put so much expectation on date night. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be this. It's got to be that, you know, it's got to be romance. We have to have great passionate sex for four hours at the end of it. And, you know, she's got to orgasm 50 times and all whatever it is. Right. And that's a bunch of BS. That's just pressure. You're putting a false narrative on this thing that, you know, is never going to always be perfect. We're human, mm. right? And there's times when <laughs> I'm sure it never happens to you and Amelia, your partner, but my wife and I can go into a date night mad at each other, right? You're like, I don't want to go out with her right now. She's wrong. And uh, those stories that go in our heads and, you know, fortunately we get over them. And like I said, this probably never happens to any guy listening to this, but it's happened to me. Then you just push through, right? You go, let's just go have fun. Let's just make this a fun experience. And if you go without the expectation, go in the possibilities, maybe you go to the restaurant or you go to the park, which we like to go to outdoor concerts, but it starts to rain. Then you make it a fun experience and it becomes an adventure, right? It's just like kids. My son I can get them really excited. Like, hey, let's go get your shoes on and let's go have fun. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he kind of gets excited because he picks up on my energy. But if I'm like, get your shoes on, let's go out. He's going to throw a tantrum. He doesn't want to get his shoes on, et cetera. It's the same thing, right? It all has to do with the energetic experience that we start the date night with. And that again, starts with the planning aspect of it and knowing what the outcome you want. Because if you know the outcome and you're open to possibilities, you don't care how you get there as long as you get there. Hey, sorry to interrupt the show, but I wanted to ask you a question. Do you ever feel like something's just missing? Like there's something more out there and you just can't put your finger on it? I totally get it. Go over right now to thepowerfulman.com forward slash freedom to discover the system that other businessmen just like you are using. We've included 10 case studies, 10 men just like you who have found the solution and have found their way on their path. And we want to share that with you. Go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash freedom right away. Now let's get back to the show. And do you consider Erin's love languages when you're planning the day at night? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Um, so I know what my wife likes. I know what her love language, which is quality time. So that makes date night easier for me because um, really I just have to spend time with her and do something. Um, but yeah, I definitely take those into consideration. But I also take in mine, Tim, because if I'm trying to make my wife happy and not trying to make myself happy or allow myself to be happy, then it's going to be a crappy date night. So I'm, I'm effectively dating myself and her at the same time. Hmm. Hmm. I love it. And, um, what do you then do to help you to be present with her on date night? If a love language is uh, quality time, how do you then make sure you are present and engaging with her? The first step for me is making sure that I have a transition time. Most important thing for me, there's some sort of transition time. Now, if that transition time doesn't happen, because we have a toddler, maybe the babysitter comes over or whatever, then I tell her, right? Hey, babe, let's go out. We're going to go, um, we're going to go out on a moonlight hike, right? We're outdoorsy people. We love the outdoors. Um, sounds like a cheesy romantic thing, right? We're going to go on a moonlight hike. I might say, <laughs> look, I just need a little transition time coming through. Let's take a little bit of time just to, 
to kind of chill out and transition. Let's go, you know, grab a snack or just give me a few minutes. How was your day? Tell me, tell me the, this is something that my wife and I talk about almost every time, but you know, what were the magical moments about your day? And then just listen. I make sure my phone is off. That's paramount. Do not take your phone out guys. Phone is off. Um, and now it might be on in case we need to hear the babysitter, but certainly in my pocket or, or away from view. Um, and so it's not, not being there. And then it sounds cheesy, Tim, but it's breathing. It's really breathing in and, and listening to what she's saying, but listening from a point of understanding, not from a point of wanting to say something. Mm. How about you? What do I do? Yeah. Oh, we don't have enough time for that, do we? <laughs> <laughs> well, this could be uh, a part two of the episode then. Yeah. Um, just in short, for me, it's making sure that I have some time in my diary, usually on a Monday, uh, to plan the date night for the, for the weekend, whether it's a Friday or a Saturday. Um, I do take into account Amelia's love language. It's, you know, hers is acts of service and quality time. Um, so that's pretty easy. And then making sure that as it comes to date night, that again, similar to you, I've got some transition time. I'm not just rushing into it. Um, and, you know, I will gauge how she's feeling. Sometimes I've planned these really great date nights and she just wants to stay in. Um, you know, she's tired. She doesn't want to get dressed up. She doesn't want to go out. She just wants to relax and hang with the dogs and that's fine. And if we do that, then we'll make sure the TV stays off, the music's playing, we'll uh, cook dinner together, we'll eat together, the mobile phones will be away. And again, I'll, I'll do my best to engage in conversation without trying to solve. That's probably been one of my biggest um, learning curves, if you will, over the past year or two. Really, you know, engaging without um, just creating that space where she can communicate and, and we can engage without me <laughs> solving or, you know, going into that mode, which I think there's a lot. As, as men, we can easily do, right? It's, it's, you know, especially business owners, you know, we spend all day solving problems. It, you know, for me especially, I've got to train myself to shift into a different mode when I'm with her. Um, and again, just like similar to you too, not having the expectation on the evening that it must go a certain way, it must look a certain way. At the end of the day, for me, it's all about creating that, that space for Amelia and I to connect um, if that turns out to be that we play, end up playing a board game or we end up going out or we end up cooking dinner or we end up watching a comedy or we end up whatever, um, cool. I'm totally open to any and all possibilities. Um, as long as I am present and my phone is away, um, I think that's always the biggest thing. You know, the, the date nights always, regardless of what we do, the date nights always seem to go well when I'm just present and I'm there. Um, because when I'm present and I'm there, obviously I can come up with different ideas and pivot and, and so on and, uh, managing my energy as well. Um, not even just on the day of, but just in general, managing my energy versus managing my time means that when the date night arrives, I've actually got the energy to be present and engage in the conversations. Whereas in the past, sometimes I've just had a bit of a, <laughs> a blank stare on my face because I've just been too tired, quite honestly. Um, so yeah, a lot of similarities, which is quite interesting because obviously we've, we've never actually spoken about this. I've never asked you this question, but like I say, it comes off the back of one of the men sharing it in the Facebook group and the guys getting involved in that conversation. So um, I'll be sure to let this particular guy know that we uh, recorded this episode today. I think he'll be really pleased to, to take a listen. Absolutely. Well, here's a, here's a call to action, gentlemen, listening to this is a shorter episode, but I would appreciate all of you guys, if you're listening to this, just give me an, uh, a head nod, go over to the Facebook group you can find that in the show notes and let us know what you do to prepare for date night. And if you don't prepare for date night, let us know that as well. I'd love to hear and get some insight and maybe collectively we can come up with a, <laughs> a working manual for us men to uh, wow these women of ours. Mm, great idea. Well, gentlemen, that's a wrap for us today for The Powerful Man Show. Please go over to thepowerfulman.com forward slash freedom where you can see a case study of other men just like you. 
And we'd also appreciate it if you'd rate and review us on wherever you're finding this podcast so other great men like you can join the conversation. That's it for us today. Have an amazing week.